time with us this evening. Would you worship alongside of us tonight as we lift up our hands?
how to weather the storm. Uh, have you often heard that storms don't last, but tough people do? And maybe tonight you feel like, hey, I'm not tough. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna make it. I'm not gonna last through this. Or do you ever wonder how you're gonna get through this season? How you're gonna navigate the roads, the avenues that are ahead of you? Uh, maybe you feel like this is gonna be the big one that's gonna wipe me out. It's gonna destroy my business. It's gonna destroy my life. <clears throat> Maybe you feel like tonight that you are just not tough enough, but I'm here to tell you that if you are a believer of Christ, if you're walking in alignment with his word and his plan for your life, that you 
we'll overcome this and much, much more. That's my promise to you tonight. As we dive into this evening's teaching, uh, I want to address two very re realities that we have, uh, two very invisible forces that we're faced against. With the COVID, there is an invisible force that, that uh, nobody can see, but it's very much evident, this sickness and disease. But uh, aside from that, there are two invisible forces that um, are at work in our life every day. And the way we respond to the situations and circumstances in our life will determine the outcome. So these two forces that we're going to talk about is fear and faith. They're the two uh, bases for um, the, the way that we will respond to any given situation. Fear is to succumb to a circumstance and its torments. It'll cause us to lose sleepless, uh, to, lose, to have sleepless nights. It will cause us uh, to be sick and fearful and wondering. We will worry about things that will never come to pass. We will lay in bed, rolling over, back and forth, figuring out how we're going to navigate. Should this come upon us? Should that come upon us? And um, it'll, it'll rob us of a good night's sleep. But faith is the foundation and it's the hope and confidence in the one who has authority in all things. Faith is a deep, restful sleep in the middle of the storm. When we uh, think about the story about uh, the disciples being out on the boat and Jesus was asleep in the bottom, he was resting at peace because he trusted. He had faith that no matter what came his way, he didn't have to be awake for it, didn't have to be on guard for it, uh, that, that God was going to protect him. And I just think about how, how awesome that is that we can have that same kind of peace in the middle of the storm. See, fear can't see past the negative uh, things that are happening all around. Fear can't see past it. Um, this storm is upon me and, and you know, they're saying we're locked down and we can't do nothing and our business and our, our, our money are, is um, decreasing, our income's decreasing. I mean, we were, we're caught off guard by all these things that fear says we need to be mindful of. But faith, is the assurance, is that peace, is that confidence, is that trust, that reliance upon the good things that are hoped for, the good things that God has promised for you and for me. I want to read 2 Corinthians 4, 8 and 9 tonight. It says, we are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. We're struck down, but not destroyed. And I want to break that that verse apart just for a moment. That is Paul speaking there, but I want to break it down to, to uh, explain the response from fear or faith. So fear would say, hey, we're hard pressed on every side. But then faith answers, yet not crushed. Fear says, we're perplexed. And faith answers, but not in despair. Fear says, we're persecuted. And faith says, it answers, but not forsaken. We're struck down, fear says, but faith answers, but we're not destroyed. And we still have a hope. See, faith is not the denial that there is a situation or a circumstance taking place, but it does deny that that circumstance has the final say, that the final word is going to come from the Lord. So we, we know as believers that it is not over until God says it's over. And we're not going to fail. We're not going to be forsaken unless God should forsake us. And it's not his character to do so. So we know that we're not going to be forsaken, that he's not going to leave us, that he's going to be with us in the storms of our life. Uh, I've walked through many storms in my life. I've weathered them. And, and I felt like um, I endured because for me, quitting is not an option. It's not an option to quit. So I know what it's like to feel fear enter the hospital room. And I know what it's like for the devil to say, this is going to be the big one that takes you out. This is going to be the one that you're not going to overcome. And death is certain. I know what it's like to get paid and uh, pay your tithe and pay all your bills and have $4 left for the next two weeks with a six month old on diapers and formula with no extra money to buy food. I know what that's like. I know what it's like to feel unloved, underappreciated and overlooked. I know what it's like when the devil spews forth lies and says you're not good enough. I know what it's like to get the phone call that your loved one has been rushed to the hospital. And I know what it's like to wonder how you're gonna make it through the pain of a broken heart. 
I've experienced these things. And so I know firsthand what that feels like. Second Corinthians 1 9 says, indeed, we felt within ourselves that we had received the very sentence of death. But that was to keep us from trusting in and depending on ourselves instead of God who raises the dead. Undeniably, every victory that I've ever had in faith was not because I'm some kind of superwoman. It wasn't because I don't go through things. Um, in fact, I, I'm really powerless on my own, aside from what God will do through me if I believe. Uh, I, I'm powerless and, and I'm weak and I'm just like you walking through uncertain times. But I have placed my confidence in the one who has promised because he is faithful. He's faithful to us. He's faithful to perform his word in our lives. He's faithful to watch over his promises for you and for me. My faith has increased each time I've weathered the, the storm. Now, I know on this side of it, if you're going through a, a huge struggle, you're not going to say, oh, I'm so grateful that I, my faith is increasing during this time because it's such a vulnerable place. It's such um, maybe a lonely place. But I want to encourage you that God is stretching you. He is stretching your faith. He is increasing your, your capacity to understand his ability of what he really wants to do in your life. He is wanting to enlarge your, your tents. And um, so, so don't look at it like this time is a negative time because God is going to show you how to weather the storm. And the benefit of weathering the storm is that we arise afterwards. We come out of the storm with a deeper faith with a new revelation of who God is in our circumstance. And not only that, but we come out with having more of a likeness of Christ in our life where we can just trust God and just believe God. Charles Spurgeon said this. He said, I've learned to kiss the wave that throws me against the rock of ages. I have learned to kiss the wave that throws me against the rock of ages. You see that wave that is throwing us against the rock of ages? It's really doing us a favor. It's really bringing us back to our security, to our foundation. It is, it's that, that rock that won't be moved. It's the rock that won't be shaken no matter what winds or waves blow. That, that wave is really doing us a favor, bringing us back to God. Bringing us back to the one who is the answer of all things, who really is our strength in our weakness, who really is our joy in our sadness. I mean, that rock that is unshaken, no matter what storm it faces, it has weathered the test of time and it is a sure foundation for you and for me. Uh, I love what Psalms 61, one through four says. This is David. He prayed, hear my cry, O God. And attend to my prayer. From the end of the earth, I will cry to you. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For you have been a shelter for me, a strong tower from my enemy. I will abide in your tabernacle forever. I will trust in the shelter of your wings. And then it says, Selah, which means pause and just calmly think about that. Calmly think about asking the Lord that when your heart is overwhelmed, that he would lead you to that rock, which is higher than you, that's stronger than you, that's able to protect you and give you uh, shelter from uh, the storm. See, getting through the storms and weathering the storm, it depends on who you run to. Where is it that you run when you face a battle? Are you more focused on the, what the storm is doing or on where you are going. See, even Peter, when he stepped out on the water, he was walking on the water to Jesus, but in that moment, he took his eyes off Jesus and he got focused on the storm that was going around him. And it was when he focused on the storm that he began to sink. If we will keep our eyes focused on Jesus in the middle of the storm, he's gonna help us walk to him. He's gonna help us uh, do the things that he do has done and is able to do. And he's gonna lead us into truth. On a compass, we know that there is north, south, east, and west. Direction is based on the compass, uh, on the magnetic field, and therefore it changes and it fluctuates. But true north, and I had to look this up because I'm not really scientifically inclined. What a surprise. 
True north is not governed by the pole, but it's based on the center of the earth's axis. Axis. So if we're going to make it through the storms in our life victorious, we need to focus on what we believe in our core of what is truth and what is real and not on the outside influences that want to pull us one way or another. Those those poles that, that change and fluctuate based on the circumstance. We don't want to do that. We want our, our core, the, the center of who we are, to be in tune with who God is and what God has said about our circumstance so that when the winds and the waves blow, our roots are down firm and grounded in the soil of the word of God, that we're not going to be shaken, that we're not going to be moved. It's not a denying that there is a storm blowing, but that storm is not going to determine my faith. It's not going to determine my outcome come because I know in whom I placed my faith and my trust in. God's word needs to be our true north at the center of who we are. We need to believe God's word like our life depends upon it because it definitely does. So what is the biggest issue that you face today? I know everybody has a different perspective and I know that we're all going through different things, but I, I wonder and I'm sure that it's not going to take you but moments to come up with it, whatever that is. What the, what the biggest issue is that you face today. So is it is it your finances? Is it you don't know how you're gonna be able to make ends meet? Is it that um, you're not getting paid during this season and, and you're scrounging for to gather food to get, even get the, the basic supplies and necessities that you need? Is it your relationships? Is it being stuck in home at the home with your family and tensions are rising or maybe it's relationships with uh extended loved ones or or distant uh relatives maybe it's just the fear of the unknown maybe you're just walking in fear moment by moment just can't seem to uh, catch your breath can't seem to lift your head just seem overwhelmed by what's going to take place and how the future is going to play out maybe the biggest issue you face today is forgiveness, unforgiveness. Maybe it's that you don't forgive yourself or maybe you have not forgiven others. Maybe that is the biggest issue that you're facing today, that you just can't get past hurts and wounds and how people have broken uh, you by saying negative things about you. Maybe that's where you're at today. Maybe it's sickness or disease. Maybe you just tested positive for COVID. Maybe you're in the hospital listening to the, this. Maybe you have sickness or disease in your body. What is the biggest issue that you face today? Is it job related? Is it the uncertainty of not knowing if you're going to have a job tomorrow? Corey Ten Boom, which was uh, uh, in the prisoner camps in, Hol in the Holocaust, she said this. She said, look around and be distressed. Look within and be depressed but look at Jesus and be at rest. And if we're really going to find rest during this time, no matter what the biggest issue is that we face, we're going to have to focus on Jesus. And we're going to have to be at rest knowing that he's not asleep in the bottom of the boat, that he is really fighting for us and working for us and ministering to us and trying to increase our faith during this time. My encouragement to you is, is to look up in the word what God has said about your situation. What has God said about your, your circumstance? Oftentimes I remind people of that. I, I don't tell people what God is saying, what I feel like God is saying to them, but I'll say, what has God said to you? What has God said to you? What are the promises that he has given that you can be assured of? The good part about that is, is that his word never changes. He never changes. He spoke his word and he wrote it down. Not so that he would remember what it was, but so that we would never forget what he has said to us because he lo loves us and he's so mindful of our needs. There are some ways that faith works in our life. And those are some things that I kind of want to talk about um, this evening. We obtain faith by the word. Romans 10, 17 says, so faith comes by hearing and hearing comes by the word of God. So um, our faith increases as we hear the word of God, but also uh, the understanding of what we hear is increased by the word of God. So we hear it and our capacity to understand it is increased 
The more we dig into it, the more we dive into it, the more we glean from it, the more we rely upon it, it grows in us. And what faith does is that faith leads to more faith. When um, I was younger, I, I prayed smaller prayers. And now that I'm older, I, I pray bigger prayers because I know that God has worked in those small situations, those simple little things that I was just asking him to do in my life. And I've seen him work and move in those situations. So now, because I've seen him faithful in the small things, I know that he's going to be faithful in much. And so I continue to believe and continue to grow my faith as I apply it. Romans 1.17 says, For in the gospel, a righteousness which God ascribes is revealed, both springing from faith and its leading to faith, disclosed through the way of faith that arouses to more faith. As it is written, the man who through faith is just and upright shall live and shall live by faith. We live by faith. We do what we do every day should be by faith. And that's what's going to increase us. That's what it, what's going to keep us. That's what's going to help us reach the destination that we are looking for. Uh, faith, it gives us strength. I don't know about you, but sometimes I feel, uh, I feel weak. I feel overwhelmed. But our faith gives us strength to say, hey, mm, I'm not going to quit. God hasn't forsaken me. He has not brought me this far to leave me. He's going to continue to carry me. He's going to finish the work that he started in my life. And I can believe him because of who he is <clears throat> and that his word is sure. Psalms 84, 5 through 7 in the Amplified Version says, Blessed, happy, fortunate, to be envied is the man whose strength is in you. In whose heart are the highways to Zion. Passing through the valley of weeping, of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The early rain also fills the pools with blessings. They go from strength to strength, increasing in victorious power. Each of them appears before God in Zion. Are you coming before God? In Zion, in the place where the Lord dwells, are you coming before him and are you allowing him to increase your faith from strength to strength? It's like, uh, I th think of the kids out of monkey, on monkey bars. They, they grab a hold of one and they're swinging out and they grab the next. And that's what it is. God has not left us. We're, we're, we're holding on to what we know and we're reaching out to what yet is to yet to be revealed through him. And we're just going from strength to strength. To strength, to strength, no, no break, no falling in between, just a reliance upon him as we hold on tight to his word and we believe him for what we already know. And we step out in faith, reaching to the word uh, that he's already spoken for our future, believing that he's going to bring it to pass. Faith carries us from glory to glory. Whoa. So now we got faith to faith, strength to strength, and now glory to glory. Second Corinthians 3, 17 and 18 says, now the Lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. That means there is freedom. But we all with unveiled face behold, as, beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the spirit of the Lord. So as we increase in faith, as we increase in strength, we are also being uh, transformed from glory to glory, from uh, one revelation of God to another, from uh, God's faithfulness in the past to the present circumstances. It is um, being transformed by the spirit of the Lord where we have liberty and freedom. So we are not bound up by fear. We're not bound up by worry, but we are trusting in the presence and the power of God to move us from glory to glory, from this victory that the enemy was fighting us against to this victory right now that we currently have in Christ. And I don't know about you, but I'm excited about the glory that is going to be revealed as soon as this whole COVID thing shuts down, as soon as God raises up and we are able to come back uh, into the house of the Lord once again to worship him and to praise him, the glory that is going to be there. Because even now, the glory of God is moving in our homes. The glory of God is ministering to his people right where we are. So if we all come together, can you imagine the glory that is going to be yet to be revealed? When 
when we come together. It just makes me so excited thinking about what the Lord has planned for us. Storms in the natural sense all come with a preparedness plan for safety. Uh, I don't know uh, I, about you, but I, I grew up in Illinois for a short time, for, for four years of my life. And so I remember what it's like to live in uh, places where tornadoes are, are prevalent or common. And you may be at your home, you may be at school, you could be anywhere. And all of a sudden you hear in the sound, the, in the town, this sound, this this siren blaring. And you, when you heard that sound, you knew uh, that it was time to seek shelter, that you were to go into the secret place, you were to hide. And, and hurricanes are the same way, not, not, I don't know, maybe they have sounds that they sound in the town, but, but they, they uh, want you to seek shelter in a, in a safe place. And so they tell you to go in the innermost recesses of your home or down in the basement of your home. In the case of a tornado, they tell us, go, go down. And I remember spending a lot of time in that dusty floor uh, of a basement in that, in that parsonage we lived at and just waiting for that time to be over. Just sitting down, listening maybe to the radio, just waiting for that time to be over. But in this time, in this storm, we need to get down into the secret place. We need to get down into the recesses where it's, it's no distractions. It's just us and God. We need to let him hide us behind his shadow. And, and we need to let him cover us with his feathers and just feel him, feel him speak to us and breathe upon us new life and refreshing. We need to allow his presence to dwell with us. How important it is during the storms of our lives that we don't neglect the the reading of the word, the the singing of the hymns or the songs. Let's let a joyful noise come before the Lord, even in our times of suffering. I think about David or not David, Paul and Silas, as they were in the jail and how um, they praised the Lord after they'd been beaten. They're they're chained they They can do nothing to change their circumstances. So in the middle of their circumstances, because they believe God, they just lifted up a song of praise before him. They just made his praise glorious. They just sang together, just lifting him up. And, and you see as, as you read those scripture verses, how the situation immediately changed, how there was the earthquake and the chains were broken off of Paul and Silas. But it wasn't just off Paul and Silas, but it was broken off everyone that was chained and bound. So what we do in the middle of the storm, even when we're in the secret place, is going to have a, a lasting impact and effect on those around us. Even in that moment, then the jailer ended up getting saved. His whole family came to know Christ as Savior and Lord because they were willing to go through the storm with their praise on. I encourage you tonight to get your praise on, to keep your praise on the edge of your lips to speak out and declare who God is in your circumstance. He hasn't changed. Your circumstances may have changed, but God has not changed and he's faithful and he's, and he's going to minister and work in your circumstance. If we'll believe him, if we'll trust him, if we'll rely upon him, if we'll glorify him. And this time when uncertainty hits home, we need to dig down deep. We need to spend more time reading the word. I'm speaking to myself. We need to spend more time reading the word. We need to spend more time in prayer. Because see, the situation, it doesn't matter really what it looks like. Because in the midnight hour, God is not sleeping. Did you hear me? In the midnight hour, God is not sleeping. He's awake. He's working. And he's going to turn it around for your good and his glory, that's what his word says. He's gonna turn things around so that you reap the benefits of all the hardship that you've walked through. Even when we look at Job and what he went through, at the end of his life, he had more than what he had lost. And I believe that that's what God is gonna do for God's people during this season. At the end of this, and maybe even through it, we're going to have more than what we ha had before. We're going to have a deeper walk with Jesus than we had before. We're going to have an increased faith 
than we've ever had before. We're going to have uh, power and authority over the darkness, over the kingdom and the princes uh, palities of the air than we have ever had before. Our, our banking account is not going to be de depleted. We're going to have more than we've had before. We're going to have opportunities to witness to other people than we've ever had before. God is going to do something supernatural during this time than we have ever had before. I just want us to trust him. Let's trust him through this season. Years ago, the devil came a knocking. He came knocking on our door. And here's the thing and the truth of it is the devil knows right where we live. It's no secret. He knows where we are. But if we're going to get through the battles, the toughest, uh, the, the strongholds that the enemy is trying to establish, if we're going to break those down and every high lofty thing that sets itself up, up against the knowledge of God has to be brought low, we're going to have to stand upon the word of God. And we're going to have to declare what the word of God says. We're going to have to open with our mouth. See, life and death is in the power of our tongue. We're the one that get to eat the fruit that we speak of. We call it forth and we live it out. So here's, here's what I want us to do. I want us to declare what God has said in our circumstance. Not what we see, but what, by faith, what God has said is ours. We're overcomers. We're more than a conqueror through him who loved us. We, we are victorious. He has created us with greatness. And we have the power and authority over the kingdom of this world and the principalities of darkness. We are victorious. So what I did during this time when the, the enemy came, uh, in addition to just reading the word or just praying and just really trusting God and believing that he's going to be my shield and my protection, I, I had bought the Bible on CDs years ago and, and um, my children would listen to them as they go to sleep each night. So I, I got out the CD that was Psalm 91 and I just put it in the CD player and for days, weeks, months. I just, I just put it on play, on repeat, on Psalms 91, Psalms 91, over and over again. A declaration over my house, over the victory that was to come because God was working and he was moving and I just let it play over and over into the atmosphere, pushing back the darkness, pushing back the forms of darkness. Uh, and, and I believe that God worked and moved mightily in that season as he's continuing to work even now. But I want to read this scripture to you tonight. I want to close out with this scripture verse. If you will, um, just even close your eyes and just listen. I don't even want you to see me. I just want you to listen to what God is saying that he will do, even in this season in your life and in my life, if we'll trust him. And this is the amplified version. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall remain stable and fixed under the shadow of the Almighty, whose power no foe can withstand. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God. On him I lean and rely, and in him I confidently trust. For then he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. Then he will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you shall trust and find refuge. His truth and his faithfulness are a shield and a buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror of the night, nor of the arrow, the evil plots and slanders of the wicked that flies by the day, nor of the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor of the destruction and sudden death that surprise and lay waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only a spectator shall you be, yourself inaccessible in the secret place of the Most High, as you witness the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord your refuge and the Most High your dwelling place. There shall no evil befall you, nor any plague or calamity come near your tent. For he will give his angels a special charge over you 
to accompany and defend and preserve you in all of your ways of obedience and service. They shall bear you up on their hands, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent shall you trample underfoot. And this is what I love. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him high because he knows and he understands my name, has a personal knowledge of my mercy, love and kindness, trusts and relies on me, knowing I will never forsake him. No, never. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. What a beautiful promise from the Lord that we can lean in, we can trust, we can rely on, we can declare it. I encourage you to go back and read Psalms 91 and put your name anywhere it says he. You just put your name in there. And just make it a declaration over you, over your home, over your children, over your family, that even during this time, even during the storm, whatever your storm may be that you are facing tonight, that God is going to give you victory over it because that is who he is. He has done all that he has done so that you and I would be able to obtain victory over our enemies. And our enemies are his enemies because we believe the word of God. So God, tonight, I just thank you for your word. Lord, I thank you for your promises that you've not forsaken the righteous, Lord God. Our seed is not going to be begging bread, but you are faithful, Lord God. So those tonight that are, are struggling financially, Lord, I pray that you would bless them, God. I pray that you would awaken hearts and minds of people to give to them, Father, that there would be no lack, that there would be no emptiness, God. You, you even fed Elijah by a widow, Lord God. Uh, and, and, and I pray, Lord God, that you would just minister and move in the lives of your people tonight. Those, oh God, that are tormented in their mind by the spirit of fear, by every new newscast that comes across. God, in the name of Jesus, I just rebuke right now that spirit of fear and I command it to be casted low, God. And I pray right now in the place where fear was that faith would arise, oh God, in their hearts and minds. Lord God, that the enemy would be scattered, Father, that victory would be brought to your children, Father, for you have positioned us from a place of victory. God, may we stand upon the rock that is not moved, that is not shaken, Lord God, that does not sway when the winds and waves blow, Lord God, and, and help us to be grateful for this time that has allowed us to come back to you in a deeper way, Lord God, that has allowed us the opportunity to see how you might move and work in ways that we've never believed you before or never experienced before. Lord, I pray that you would pour out your spirit upon all flesh, God, that even now our sons and our daughters are going to prophesy that you are going to turn what the enemy has meant for harm around for our good and your glory. God, that we can really go, Lord, as your word says, from faith to faith, from strength to strength, from glory to glory, that there will be no lack, oh God, in, in the people uh, that you have called by name, Lord God, from your sons and your daughters, that we would be equipped for every good Good work, Lord God. Help us not to, to bide our time until the season is over, God, but help us to be fruitful during this time, using uh, the, the days wisely, making the most of every opportunity because these days are evil, Lord God. And we just thank you. We just thank you, Lord God, for peace. Lord God, I speak peace over people tonight. I speak peace. Lord God, that tonight they're going to be able to sleep as they haven't in weeks, Lord God. I pray for rest upon your people. Lord God, that we are raised up in strength and might and that there becomes a mighty army, Lord God, a force to be reckoned with that knows their God, that will not back up, not shrink back, but will face the battle head on, knowing that you have created us from a position of victory. We love you, Jesus, tonight. We thank you for who you are and what you're doing in our lives, oh God. And be with us until we can all come together again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Have a blessed remainder of the week. We look forward to seeing you on Sunday and just believe that God is going to do greater things than you have ever seen before because he is. In Jesus name. Amen.